I just realized that my whiskey is over there and I have this microphone clipped onto me that I don't know how to do. Where's Andrea? Andrea! So I'm now gonna pick up the camera so I can go get my whiskey. Or I guess I could unclip my microphone. Whatever. Getting my whiskey, getting my whiskey. Got to get my whiskey. There we go, now we're coming back cause I'm tethered to this microphone strap, yeah. Hello friends, Brit here, and as you may or may not know, a little gem called Resident Evil 2 is releasing this Friday, January 25th. I am currently recording this on January 23rd, and I have had the opportunity, the, the pleasure, the honor of playing through most of the game already. I've played through Leon's main campaign. I've played through both Leon and Claire's second run, and I'm about a third of the way through Claire's main campaign. So I'm pretty familiar with this Resident Evil 2 game, and I'm going to talk about it a buttload on this week's episode of What's Good Games, but in the meantime, I thought it could be fun to take some of our community's questions about the game so I can answer them, and selfishly, I just wanna talk more about Resident Evil 2. <laughs> I have three pages of questions. I have a cup of whiskey or a glass of whiskey, so I think we're good to go. Let's do it. Oh God. Oh, oh, oh. Our first question comes from Amber Hawes, and Amber wants to know, did you find it hard getting used to the faces and voices of Claire and Leon? No, no, no. Um, so I think if you've played the original PlayStation Resident Evil 2, I think it kind of goes without saying that anything's an improvement over those voice performances, which while now like they're iconic and they're funny and like they're really cheesy, but uh, you know, they just obviously don't hold up to today's standards in voiced video games. As far as getting used to the faces, the, I think Leon has always looked amazing. So I'm not worried about him. He's a stud. He has a nineties hair going on and he rocks it. Actually, he always has that haircut in every game. Anyway, uh, the only face I had problem a problem with in the beginning that I no longer have the problem with is with Claire. I thought when they were first showing her off, especially during the, the, the screenshots or whatever it was during E3 that they were showing, her face just looked a little vacant. Like it didn't look, it just didn't look like a thing that had a person behind it. But obviously, you know, as we saw more and more about the game, that changed and I really, really like Claire's performance and I really like her face and I think it fits her really well. Sounds weird. I like her face. It fits her well. I also got a lot of questions about difficulty, so let's run down these right now. This first one comes from Akil Clark. I think I said that right. Is there a baby ass baby mode? If so, are ammo locations a bit more forgiving? So yes, there is. Thank God. It's called assist mode, and in assist mode, you can take more damage. Um, it, it, I think technically it's called like you regenerate a little bit of health, but there's really no active regeneration, especially once you get down to caution. So I think what it more does is it prevents you from losing health from bites as quickly as you would if you're playing in normal mode. So you kind of have like an extra little like defense buff. That's how I look at it anyway. And then you have easier enemies, which means that they go down quicker, which is good because the zombies in this game are bullet sponges. Even on assist mode, you shoot them in the head five times, they're still walking around at you. It's kind of mind boggling. See what I did there? Kind of cause like shoot them in the head, mind boggling, okay. And then the other thing is, oh, aim assist. Now this is the big, big thing about uh, assist mode and it's really helpful if you have shit accuracy like yours truly because what happens is when you're wa waiming, aiming your weapon at the zombies and they're like and like bobbing and weaving around and you can't like keep the little dot on their head they uh the, the game does that for you and so you can just kind of shoot when you feel like it's right on that sweet spot so that's really really helpful that's assist mode uh, if so, are ammo locations a bit more forgiving? I don't know, because I only played on assist mode. You can judge me all you want, but I fully admit I am really bad at games where I have to shoot things accurately, and that is Resident Evil. You have to shoot them in the head or you run, and um, I'll talk about this later, but it's really important that I can take down all of the zombies. Otherwise, my experience in the game is way too stressful, so therefore assist mode is very, very good for me. So I don't know if ammo locations are a bit more forgiving. I want to say that I feel like ammo would be the same throughout all the levels of difficulty because obviously something Resident Evil is known for is inventory management and you have to be careful about the zombies you shoot and the ones you decide to run from because it is limited, especially in the harder modes because you take even more ammo to take down. So I don't know, I can't fully answer that question. 
Next one comes from Brad Ward. Can you describe what the difficulty options do? Like in detail. So I already talked about assist mode and then the next mode is normal. Now I did read that there is a difficulty scaling within normal mode, kind of like what was apparently an RE2, OG RE2. I didn't know that, but I, cause I played OG RE2 when I was nine. And then when I was a little older and I used a game shark, because otherwise it's a little too scary for me. So normal mode is just kind of like your normal mode. Um, assist mode and normal come with auto saves. And then you have hardcore difficulty, which is like if you're a badass, if you're like king or queen badass of badassmountain.com, you are playing on hardcore mode. So this requires you to save using ink ribbons, which I think is so cool because normally how you save is you have typewriters throughout the game. In an OG Resident Evil, you would have to use ink ribbons and find ink ribbons, which essentially limited how often you could save the game, so you had to be really careful about that. In REG, REG2, that makes no sense. In Resident Evil 2 Remake, you can just access the typewriters whenever you want, and you can save as often as you want, and it's really nice. And there are auto saves, although I will say that the auto saves aren't, they're fine, but um, when I was playing the demo back, not the demo, when I was at a preview event, I had noticed that the auto saves weren't super ideal because every time I would die, I'd have to see a cutscene all over again. And I'd have to go through like a few little steps before I'd get to where I was, even though I had completed an event that you think would have constituted an auto save. Anyway, your best bet is absolutely definitely using the typewriter. So yeah, hardcore mode, got off on a rant there. Hardcore mode, harder difficulties. You have to use ink ribbons to save the game and there are obviously no auto saves. <gasps> And then Katie wants to know, hello, Ooh, I, I don't know why I gave you that accent, Katie, I'm sorry. Uh, she said, I'd also like to know how the difficulty settings work. The demo bothered me because of how many point blank direct headshots the zombies could take before actually dying. Yeah, so that, that's a thing. Um, in this game, headshots do not necessarily mean a one, one, hot, one, hot, one shot kills. So you will come across a zombie and there's a chance that if they're slumped down and they haven't animated yet, that if you shoot them in the head, I found that there's a higher likelihood that you will one shot them, which means their head will just explode and that's when you know you've done the damn thing. But when they are shambling towards you, I found that it's harder to get those shots. Typically they happen maybe after like two or three. So in assisted mode, you know, I could take them down with maybe like four to six headshots. Um, I believe in the hardcore mode, I was talking to a friend and it took like 10 to 12 shots. So just something to keep in mind. But yeah, you know, and I've heard people say that there's a sweet spot on the head where you can uh, one shot the zombies. I haven't been able to find that sweet spot. It just kind of seems like more random to me when you will score those critical hits, kind of like it would be in an RPG or something like that. So yeah, just be prepared for that. It's like you can, you will rarely, rarely one shot uh, a zombie in the head. They can take lots of bullets in the head. They have iron heads, steel heads, heads of steel. The next questions come from people wondering if they should give Resident Evil a shot because they are not into survival horror games. <laughs> okay, first question comes from Mike Nitroy. Nitroy? Sorry, man. Scary games are not my jam at all, but the puzzle and exploration elements seem really cool. I enjoyed the 30 minute demo, so do you think I can handle the full game without having the urge to nope out of it? So here's the thing, Mike. I think almost everyone who plays this game is going to have a nope moment where you're like, I just gotta step away for a hot minute and play something different. For me, I would hop into Tales of Vesperia on my Switch for maybe like 15 to 20 minutes at a time. And I'm at a point where that game is like happy and joyful. So it's like, oh, this is nice. It's a good, it's a good palate cleanser. So you will probably want to know about it at some point. And that's totally fine. Because this game, it's not like a, it's not like a super dark and deep heavy game. It's, there are those moments, but more than anything, it's the atmospheric tension, the, the feeling that there's never any relief in sight, especially unless you're in a safe room. You know, you're always gonna be hearing creaking and, and, and the groaning of the building and, and sounds and things moving and you never really know where it's coming from. And after a while, that does get to you, especially if you're playing on headphones, which I would highly, highly recommend. So if you did enjoy the 30 minute demo, then I think you should, you can definitely handle it. Just. Give yourself a break every now and again if, if you need it. A next question is about length. Where's <laughs> my that's what she said pillow? <laughs> okay. Uh, John Workhall wants to know how long are the playthroughs for each character? So the first time I played, I played as Leon's main campaign, and that took me 10 hours and like four minutes or something like that. Now I did spend a lot of time gawking, looking at everything, searching every nook and cranny, 100%ing every room, which by the way, I don't, I'll talk about this probably a little later, but the map feature in this game is just, it's so, 
so good. So it was easy to know like what I had to, not what I had to do, but where I had to go in order to 100% things. And I spent a lot of time, like I said, just gawking and walking around and looking at all the fucking toilet paper everywhere. I'm like, this is so cool. So that did take me 10 hours. Then when I finished Claire's second run immediately after I clocked in around seven and a half hours. And then when I finished Leon's second run after that, I clocked in about four and a half hours. So it just depends, I guess, you know, like how much do you, cause there's a lot of stuff you can skip, right? You don't have to search every room. You don't have to do everything, but if you just stick to the main, um, to the main story and you just do what you got to do and you know what you're doing, you can really easily beat this in like four hours or less. I mean, probably even less than that. I'm really excited to see where the speed runs come in. But like I said, if you haven't played this before, if you're your first run, like I would say seven to eight to nine to 10 hours is what you can probably expect. Oh, it's so good. 10 hours of goodness, man. Delilah Lugo wants to know, is the story widely different from the original to the point where spoilers will matter? Long story short, nay. If you played the original Resident Evil 2, you are going to be very familiar with the events that go down and in the order that they go down in. That said, there are some new story beats, specifically in Claire's campaign, where you get to see a new location and learn more about characters that we know from Resident Evil 2. I'll keep it vague. And speaking of that, you know, there are our fan favorite characters are in Resident Evil 2 and you do get to see more dialogue from them and more personality. So that's really fun and I think makes it more than worth playing alone. Rachel Koski wants to know, is the game approachable if you've never played any Resident Evil games before? Yes, it definitely is. Um, because the two protagonists in this game also have no idea what's going on. So you kind of get to experience their perspective. Now, if you are familiar with this game, then you have some insight and obviously like you're going to get more out of it because there are going to be some little nods and Easter eggs that you're like, Oh, I know what that's from, but it's totally approachable. If you've never played a resident evil game before, um, what I will say, just a pro tip, inventory management is super important and be careful with your bullets. If you play on assist mode and you're smart about the way you craft ammo and keep ammo, you can probably get away with clearing every room of zombies like by permanently putting them down. But if you're playing on normal or hardcore, you just gotta know like when to run and when to conserve ammo. Pro tip. You're gonna be doing a lot of trips to your safety storage box because it's not even called a safety storage box. I don't know why I called it that, but your storage box. Cause your inventory management is crucial and you start out with like, what, like eight slots and then you eventually expand to like 20 something, but yeah. Skolt Alverson. I don't know why I said your name like that. Apologies. I never played the first one. What is the save system like? Is it a pretty forgiving checkpoint system or not? And, or do I need to make sure I'm constantly saving? Uh, okay, so I already talked about this a little bit, but TLDR, yeah, you if you're playing on assisted or normal, you have typewriters scattered throughout rooms. Maybe there's not a lot of them. You will have maybe like two to three save rooms per location. And you do have to go there and manually save, but you can do that as often as you'd like. Um, there are auto saves, but because I never died in assist mode, I uh, never got to experience how good they are. All I know is when I played my preview events a few months back in November, it wasn't that great, but there's a good chance they improved on that because they've made improvements already. I mean, they've made improvements since I played that game in terms of like convenience and whatnot. Um, yes. So just save a lot, save a lot, a lot. Cause there are occasions in the game where you'll be put into a room and you could die very, very easily because if you miss the, it's not, not necessarily a quick time event, but it's kind of like that and it's insta kill and it's not good when you die. I'm going to screw this name up and I am so sorry. Padrick O'Hanorahan. That's an awesome name. Sorry, I butchered it. I heard conflicting reports on the different scenarios in the game. Is the game one continuous playthrough with the story switching you back and forth between Claire or Leon, or it's like the original with Claire A, Leon B. I totally got that backwards, but I know I, I screwed up your question, but I think I got the point across. Pedrock. So yeah, so how it works is you have the main campaigns and I played, for example, I played Leon's main campaign first and after completion of that, I unlocked Claire's second run and upon completion of that, I unlocked Leon's second run. So um, there was some misinformation going around when the review embargo lifted yesterday, which was Tuesday the 22nd, about how you needed to finish Leon's main campaign to unlock Leon's second run and Claire's main campaign to unlock Claire's second run. And that doesn't make any sense because the whole point is you play as Leon and then you get to play as Claire and kind of see the story between different perspectives. So that's how it works. The, the zapping system, it's kind of like, it's a confusing thing. The zapping system is technically gone in the sense that your actions from Leon's main campaign does not affect 
Claire's second run, but because the two campaigns are so different, and I mean, you will do some of the same puzzles, but the puzzle solutions will be switched up in the second run. You can't just like remember what you did in the main campaign. They will be switched up. And Claire's campaign has some very different beats than Leon's does, so it, it's, it's better to do it that way, and I think that's kind of the only way you can do it, is do one character, then the other character. Not, yeah, no, I guess you could do main campaigns back to back, but I definitely would not recommend that. Sushi Girl Alley wants to know, what order should Claire and Leon be played in? Uh, this is the highly, hotly debated topic among us nerd folk. So if you've been a fan of the Resident Evil franchise, you're probably very aware of the debate that is what is canon, what is not when it comes to Resident Evil 2. Now, I think I think it's been all but officially confirmed that Claire A, Leon B is canon because of certain events that happened during Claire A that are reflected in Resident Evil 6, especially regarding Cherry and some of her interesting abilities. So that makes the most sense to me, but some people still deny it and they still say that anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole. The point is with Resident Evil 2 Remake, there's really no right or wrong, wrong way to play the, in, in regards to the order that you play these characters. Um, for me, I played Leon first and Clary second. I chose Leon because that was who I played with when I first played Resident Evil 2 back in 1998. Oh God, what was I thinking? I was just a young child. Mistakes were made. and. So that's what I did, but um, in this, like I said, in this remake, it doesn't matter because the main scenarios play out practically the same minus specific character interactions, and there are some rooms that you can or cannot access depending on who you're playing as, and the second runs also play very, very similarly, again, with the exception of character interactions and whatnot. So you're not really missing much of anything, but I would recommend if you're a fan. Just play all four, they're good times. And on that note, Leonard Rotzloff. I'm not sure if I've ever finished a horror game before, but Brit's excitement has got me on board to play. That being said, even one playthrough might be more than my fragile heart could handle. Which character should I start with given the chance it's the only one I'll actually finish? No, you can't do just one. You can't do it. I. Uh, this is a hard question, I'm not prepared for this. <sighs> I would say, if you're only going to do one, I would say do Leon's campaign because that sticks more, like I said earlier, more close to the OG RE2 storyline in certain aspects. Claire's has some new story beats to it, a new location, which is still fun, but if you want like the, the OG True Blue experience, just do Leon's first, but then you gotta play Claire's second. You have to, you just have to. Plus it's not as scary the second time because you know where the zone, I guess actually second runs are completely different, Never mind. Just drink, have a drink. If you don't drink, just turn the lights on. You'll be fine, you'll be fine, Leonard, I believe in you. Puzzles, let's talk about puzzles. Kevin Komaki wants to know, are the puzzles the same or have they been tweaked a little? They have been tweaked a lot. None of the puzzles are the same. I mean, you have, you have your keys, like your, your diamond, your spade, your heart, your club keys that unlock specific doors and whatnot, and you have medallions and that kind of stuff. You have items that you have to rotate and find the, the sweet spot and push X and then they will open. So the puzzles work the same, but none of them are the same as they are in original Resident Evil 2. So you will have to put your thinking cap on, especially in the beast, in the second runs, the puzzle solutions to several of them have been switched up. So you will uh, have to do all of the puzzles to get all the solutions. Let's talk about the tyrant or Mr. X if you've read the books. Okay, so Dan Sutherland says, reviews have been saying that Mr. X is annoying during times when you're just trying to solve a puzzle or an acquire an item. Have you noticed this during your playthrough? Joshua Faley says, do you find that the tyrant to be suspenseful challenge or an annoyance? So this is, this is interesting because I've struggled with my opinion on this. Um, on one hand, okay, so this is how it works. At one specific point during the game, don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil anything. If you're already listening, you know what the tyrant is or Mr. X, like, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you will be chased, and by chased, I mean you're gonna have a big, hulking beast tyrant constantly following you throughout the Raccoon City Police Department. And what's different about it this time around is in the original Resident Evil 2, it was more scenario based, right? Where you would open a door, you'd go into a hallway and he'd bust through a wall and then you would leave that hallway and then he would leave you alone. But this time, ladies and gentlemen, no, he follows you. So the first time I played this, the Leon's campaign, I didn't have too much of an issue with it because the way I happened to play just so happened to work out that while I was, 
I was right about to leave Raccoon City Police Department and I did the thing that triggers his arrival and uh, it is linked to a specific thing that you do and you don't have to do it right away. You can actually kind of like push it off and you can save it to the very end when you're, because when he does start following you around, it is very suspenseful and it is scary, but it would, I would say it would be annoying if you're at a point where you just want to explore and walk around the Raccoon City Police Department at your leisure and solve some last remaining puzzles because it's near impossible to do that because while you're in a room, you will hear this beast stomping around above you, below you, next to you, and you can hear him opening and slamming doors trying to find you. It's scary as hell. Um, I did get annoyed when I was trying to just do some last minute puzzles like I was saying earlier and explore a bit and gawk at all of the toilet paper everywhere and it was impossible to do that because you can't kill this guy. All you can do is shoot him in the head and he'll go down on one knee and he'll wait there for like 15 seconds and he'll get up and he'll start chasing you again. If you want to know at which point this happens, just hit me up on Twitter at Blonde Nerd and I can tell you because, uh, you know, for some people they might like it. For me personally, it was a little bit more of an annoyance. Because, uh, yeah, you'll see. <laughs> Dale Stratton wants to know, what are some of the things that they have taken away from the original RE2 that would work better in the new game? I personally believe that Resident Evil 2 Remake is just better in every way than original Resident Evil. So that's kind of a really, really hard question. Um, I... I guess the one thing I would have, li have liked to have seen that I feel like they did a better job in the original Resident Evil, so I guess I'm contradicting myself here, is I would have liked to have seen more documents scattered around. Now, there are quite a bit in the remake, but there's no, like, obviously Itchy Tasty is from a different game, but there's not a lot of diaries, a lot of logs, a lot of journals that you can just read the perspective of someone who was trying to survive within the police department. It's mostly hints and just some backstory stuff. It's not a lot of storytelling, if that makes sense. So I would have liked to have seen more of that. We have a question this time from our good friend Travis Cates. Do you think because of the success of this remake, the next game will continue in an over the shoulder survival horror style like this and go back to using zombies? Zombies as in the classic style that it, like this, slow moving and not slime or parasites like the more recent Resident Evil games. Man, I hope so. Like I, I really liked Resident Evil 7. In fact, I'm wearing my, my shirt right now. And that was obviously different because it was first person. And I, and I liked the direction that Capcom took Resident Evil. I think 4, obviously, people really loved. It's not my favorite, but people really loved it. 5 and 6 just kind of got like a little weird. You could tell Capcom's like, okay, what are we doing to this franchise? Like, let's get our footing. And then when 7 came along, even though it was first person, even though you did play as a new character uh, with a whole new virus of sorts it did still feel like resident evil in my mind and it did kind of contain that that horror that atmosphere some of the puzzles in there i really like that about it now that said now that i played resident evil 2 and seeing how well that formula translates into today oh my god i don't know man like i i would like to see it continue with this formula i think I think maybe a nice blend of RE7 and RE2 Remake would be good. Like 65% Resident Evil 2 and 35% Resident Evil 7. Yeah. Yeah. Bring and the zombies, I love the zombies and I love the lickers and the tyrants and the nemesis and the zombie Dobermans. I love all of those things and that is so classic Resident Evil. I do understand that things need to innovate and grow to keep things fresh, but uh, I would love to see a return to the zombies, and I've said that ever since 4. So, and that's why I love Leon's campaign so much in 6, because it just felt so authentic. Uh -huh. Okay, now we're kind of getting into like silly time. These are kind of some like one-off silly questions, unless I arrange these incorrectly, but we'll see what happens. Who cares? I don't prepare for anything. AJ Spain wants to know, does Brad Vickers make a comeback like how he was the special zombie in the original? So this was cool. So... In Resident Evil 2, you do, you, there's something you can do to see Chicken Heart Brad Vickers, and uh, he does make an appearance in the original Resident Evil 2. In my experience with Resident Evil Remake, I did not, Resident Evil 2 Remake, I did not see him, but I did see something of him, and I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Jason Billingsley, are you going to unbox the collector's edition like old days? Oh my god, you have no idea. Of course, of course I am, and I'll upload it to this YouTube channel as well. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Although I really wanted the European collector's edition because they have the keys. The keys. Ugh. 
Peter McDonald, if you could eat anyone's brain, who would it be? Um, someone very smart, because hopefully their intelligence would seep into my body, and then I would also become as smart as they are. Like, an astrophysicist. Leroyce James, will I pee myself playing this game? <sighs> Literally, probably not. But if we're gonna be funny and silly, I would say, yeah. There are gonna be times when you're gonna to wanna to piddle yourself and shit your pants and barf all at the same time, and it's a wonderful stew of bodily fluids. JR Shaw, what about Resident Evil 2 Remake makes it scarier than the original? Hello, JR. Uh, you know, so obviously the original Resident Evil 2 had the fixed camera angles, and Capcom could really play with that and really fuck with your mind, and that was definitely very, very scary. I think what's so scary about this one is just how. Just. Uh, it's hard to say. Okay, so a few things. I, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set my papers down and take a sip of whiskey because we're gonna get into this. Ah, okay, so original Resident Evil 2 has a really fun soundtrack and that obviously has a lot to do with how scary the game is. You know, if zombies are crawling out of a window like that cryptid like that music starts playing. That was really bad, I don't know what that was. And other than that, though, it was all about the fixed camera angles, and you would hear like the, moo, the moaning and the shuffling of zombies off screen. And obviously, that's scary. In the remake, I think because everything is just so much more realistic, it just innately just feels scarier because the graphics are obviously way better, but there's also the zombies themselves. The fact that you know they look so real and they're so terrifying and either they're pounding on the window trying to get in, you hear the glass breaking, you see them slough out, you see them like walking towards you, their arms are falling off, their eyeballs are all messed up. I don't know, just something about that. And not to mention like going back to sound, the, the atmospheric, the ambient sounds that you hear in Resident Evil, there's still music that plays in the background, but it's not like the crazy like orchestrated stuff you'd hear in the original Resident Evil. And I think that actually does a lot more for it. I did play the game, with, I played one run with the old school soundtrack and then I played it with the new soundtrack. And the old soundtrack, while it's fun, it's it just doesn't hold up anymore, especially since we don't have the loading screens, right? So you don't have like the doors creaking open and then you step into a safe room and you hear the music start to play or if you walk into the, um, the lobby, like that music starts to play, it just kind of fades in and fades out in transition in the remake. And it's fun, but I don't know how much pleasure new people will derive from it. I think that's probably why they added the new stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to complete rant. I don't even know if I answered your question. So yeah, I think it's just more how realistic it is. And the over the shoulder camera angle, it, it is scary. Like you don't have the fixed camera angles anymore, but you don't have like a whole lot of like peripheral vision. It, it, you just, I don't know. It's just fucking, it's fucking freaky. It's too realistic, too realistic for its own good. <laughs> Jonathan Lopez, who do you have the bigger heart on for, Leon or Claire? That's hard. I mean, can I say Ada? <laughs> um, see, oh God, it's, it's hard because I really like Claire's character in this, but I, I appreciate Leon because I feel like he has more of a backbone in particular, specifically when it comes to interacting with other characters. But uh, oh, I don't know. I can't answer that. Ask me next week. Carl Peterson wants to know about the ammo. Is it about the same in the original or is it more generous or stingy in the remake? I think that just depends on how, how you play, right? I think if you play on assist mode, and I think I talked about this earlier, if you play on assist mode and you find all the ammo you can, you combine it when necessary, you're going to find yourself low at times, but I never fully ran out of ammo. I was able to clear all the rooms and you know, live a happy life with a good amount of ammo. I mean, that said, I never felt comfortable. I never felt like, oh, I have 40 rounds of handgun ammo. I'm gonna be good. It's like, as you know, that's gonna go very quickly the next room you go into and there's like five zombies going on. You have to account for all of that. So I would say it definitely, especially in the harder difficulties, it's gonna feel very, uh, th you're not gonna have a lot of it. I mean, but that's, that's the staple of Resident Evil games, right? Is you never feel comfortable. Unless you're playing on a game shark like I did in the 90s where I had uh, rocket launchers. It was so good. Final two questions. Simar Beer Sing Sani. I hope I said that right. How important is it to play Resident Evil 1 to understand this? Also, will playing the older Resident Evil 2 make me appreciate this more, or is it okay just to dive into it? So no, you don't have to play any of the prior Resident Evils. You do, like I said, experience this game through two people who don't know what's going on, so you're kind of learning what's going on 
as they do. Um, there will be nods and certain things will make a little bit more sense if you've played the first Resident Evil, but by no means is it necessary. It's just kind of like a fun like, hey, here's a throwback to that thing that happened. Yeah. Uh, will playing the older Resident Evil 2 make me appreciate this more? If you've never played Resident Evil 2, the OG RE2, I would say there's really no need to go back and play that. It's... I hate saying that because I think everyone should play that game, but if you if it's kind of between playing OG and playing this one, definitely play the remake. What I do like about the original Resident Evil 2 is that it gives a little bit more insight as to what certain characters are up to, and those are all through those little diaries and journals that I was talking about earlier that there aren't as many of those in this remake. But um, I just, I don't know, if you didn't grow up playing Resident Evil 2, I don't know if you can build the appreciation that is necessary to fully appreciate this remake like people like me do, I think you'll still love the game. That sounded snobby. That's not what I meant. I'm not saying that you won't appreciate this game if you haven't played Resident Evil, the original Resident Evil 2. I think if you've never played it before, it might just be a little too late to have that nostalgia factor that will make you appreciate the game more than you would if you just played it by yourself for the first time. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Final question from Lloyd Peterson. If this was real life, would you A, stand there with a gun shooting anything and everything, B, turn it around screaming your head off as fast as, and as fast and loud as you can, C, a mixture of A and B? Huh. I think if this was real life, see that depends because if this were real life and I was in Raccoon City Police Department and I knew about all the backtracking I'd have to do throughout those hallways, I absolutely would try to shoot everything and kill everything, kill everything again, um, because the anxiety of knowing that you're going into a room and there are gonna be zombies in there who are trying to eat your face versus going into a room and knowing that you've already terminated all of those zombies, I feel like it's just a big difference. Like I wanna be king or queen of my castle. I don't want those rotten flesh bags moaning and roaming around trying to kill me. Well, friends, this was really fun. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. Talking about Resident Evil is always a good time. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to our patrons and our fans on our Facebook fan page for supplying me with these questions. There were a lot more and I honestly wasn't expecting this many. So thank you for blowing my socks off. And I'm really bad at uh, exiting videos. So I'm just going to do my normal thing and I'm just going to wave and make a weird face and say thank you. Say thanks. See you there. I can't do it. I can't do it. Bye.